What's up everyone? Welcome back to Lancaster unboxing. We're doing a series this year, a full series unboxing products that Lancaster Archery sends us. We do a full unbiased review and um, most of these products I've never shot before. Some I've shot before, some I've shot similar things of, but this is this is a 100% genuine review of whatever is in this box. So um, first things first, this is number one boxing and see what's in it. All right, I did not want to violently cut this box open because what's inside here is kind of delicate, but I didn't want to mess it up. So this, I have never used, or I use this all the time, but I've never used this brand before, ever, in anything. So this is gonna be very interesting to kind of see what this is all about. Ultima, so they don't even have they don't even have their name on it. Oh, there we go. Ultima, no, they still don't have their name on it. Oh, there we go. Shibuya, Shibuya, based out of Japan. Very loud packaging. And uh, I think this is kind of a cool kind of a cool carrying case, which is kind of cool. So let's go ahead and open it up. Huh, that's kind of nifty. Instead of a hard case like Excel does or other site people, it's a soft case, kind of like that. So what we have is Ultima CP Pro Target Compound Sight. So this is this is a, as advertised, a premier target sight. And um, you don't really want to use this for hunting or anything. This would be this would be a strictly target sight. Um, so I'm looking at it right now. I know I had to review some specs so I don't sound like an idiot when I'm opening this up. So I do know know a couple things. I watched their video on it. Um, but this is this is I think the second gen of this type. They basically just re-engineered some stuff, made it a little bit better. Um, so this is this is like the sight bar, made out of carbon. This part is carbon. And I believe it's more reinforced than their other one. So that's that. See, we have a uh, bunch of warranty stuff. Ooh, it looks like we got some sight tape. So this is one thing that sight companies have been doing more and more. I think Excel started with it but these laser engraved, or actually don't think it's sell, I think CBE started with it, but these laser engraved sight tape, which is just really good. We got some hardware, which I'm not 100% sure what that's for. They come with these Allen wrenches. I think they're, or I don't know what that, those lines are on that. That's kind of weird. They're like painted on, but oh, I'm definitely gonna lose these right off the bat. And what's in here? Oh, wow. So this, this is what you mount your scope to. And this thing has a lot, a lot, a lot of moving parts on it. And I'm probably gonna be a little bit confused about it at the beginning, but this somehow attaches to that. So we gotta figure out exactly how we do that. So this is everything you get I'm assuming when you order just the sight bar. So we didn't order a scope. I know that they do sell some sort of scopes, um, but we're gonna throw a UV3 on this, an Ultra V3 by the end of this video. Um, so anyways, we're gonna dive in. We're gonna figure out how to get this thing set up, how to mount it on a bow, and just kind of run from it there. So first thing is this is what you attach to your bow, um, which is pretty robust. Definitely would trust it. 
And what's really cool is it's reinforced, reinforced with this like 90 degree triangle thing. Um, so compared to like a straight bar of carbon, you have to intentionally put it in the same slot, slot and it can't turn. There is a little bit of slop in there, but when you turn it down, there's like no moving that thing. So I'm actually a big fan of that. It's like keyed out. It can only go in one spot, no slop at all. So I like that. And like, like I said, Shibuya is out of Japan. So if Japan has taught us anything, it's that they're extreme precision in engineering. So I have a feeling this is probably gonna be very, very high quality. So I've seen people put this together before, but I've never put one together. So this is what the scope goes on. And this lever right here, I think is the quick disconnect. So you see, as you push it down, that goes in. Oh, I think that's upside down. So this is the sight bracket. This is the scope part. I think we push this in and then it slips on just like that. That is freaking sick because when you, instead of, and I, I think you can still do that with this one. Yeah, so you can do both. You loosen this and your whole scope can pop off or you can just slide the whole freaking thing off. And then for scoring, or scoring, what am I saying? For storing, you just have this and then this, and you can put them wherever you want instead of keeping your scope on or whatever. So that's, that's pretty sweet. That's slick. And you can slide it on, and that is a tight tolerance. Like there is very little wiggle room in there. So you just slide it back on, and I'm assuming Yep, it just jumps right back on the tracks. And that's that, and you're on here. So a couple other features I guess I should mention, um, and this is kind of across the board on many site manufacturers. We have a micro little adjustment thingy here so you can read what your site tape is at, and then you can loosen that screw. You loosen that screw and then you can do fine tune adjustments on that. So let's say you're a couple yards off, but you know your sight tape is correct for your bow, you can just bump that up and down. Um, that system seems pretty good. I know on my Excel, I've definitely stripped that screw in that whole system a few times, and I don't think that looks like that's gonna break or strip or anything. It looks like a little bit bigger screw on there. On the other side, you have another place where you can put a sight tape. So you can put a sight tape on this side or you can put a sight tape on that side. And I think this side is just like a concentric number line. So that's not actually a sight tape, but I think you can put one on that side still. Whereas like this one is a sight tape, number 15 sight tape. Um, so that's kind of cool. You can put them on both sides or you can put like a, a sheet of white strip and you can just write on it, whatever you want. So that's super cool. One thing that I kind of wish they did is they only have a knob on the top. And I know there's times like on my Excel site where I twist it on the bottom, but you, you can't twist it on the bottom. So you only got one. I'm sure that you just like adjust to that and only twist it on the top, but kind of wish that there was both. Left and right adjustment seems pretty good. And what's strange about this is the tube. So this actually, we should just mount the scope on here so you guys can see what it looks like. So one thing I like compared to like an Excel mounting. So this is a, this is the new Shibuya. This is an Excel. Shibuya only uses this tiny little mounting screw. Excel uses this giant one. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna mount it and see how easy it actually is, but I think it's gonna be a lot easier. So I have my ultra scope and fits right in. So it's keyed out in here. So depending on what scope you have, it fits right in there. And then I think all you do, or hold on, you put the scope or you put the, the screw in the scope like that. And it goes right in there.
And that's tight. Go in there and give it, give it a good little extra tightness. But that ain't going nowhere. Huh. And that mounts right to it with no extra bolts or extra nuts or anything. That looks clean. So what I was talking about is the left and right windage. There's actually a tube that goes inside and it's not fully exposed. Like you see it coming out as you go to the left. So it's a very internal mechanism. And that feels really tight tolerance. And let's see how far this left adjustment can go. That is a long ways. I'm not even there yet. Oh, I'm an idiot. It stopped turning after a while. <laughs> so that's, that's a lot of adjustment. I wonder what the adjustment is on here. Let's see, so I don't lose my place. There I am right there. Crank this bad boy all the way to the left. All right, so the Shibuya left adjustment, or windage adjustment is that much. True balls, whew. So Shibuya's is nearly double the amount of windage adjustment just off of the dial. Now, the tube you can move in and out, but on a Shibuya, you don't move the tube what you do is you take out these two screws and it actually shifts over. Um, so probably ultimately you get the same amount of adjustment, but the amount of micro adjustment in the Shibuya, you get more just instantly, which I kind of like that. Um, also this tube in here, it's triangular. It's not like a round tube, which is very interesting. It's very sturdy. Um, that feels just incredibly solid and I'm assuming it's because of the shape. It just creates this like rigidity in there. So next um, we have the windage or the bar adjustment, which is the one of the first things you should do when you get it on your bow is to get this sight bar lined up 100%. Um, so this is pretty standard on all target sights, but you loosen these two screws and they're they're kind of like half slop in them so you get them a hundred percent where you want them yeah there we go so you see there's a lot of movement in there they're kind of like oval shaped um, and then additionally depending on you know your bow setup and everything you might need to move this whole bar up and down so they give you two extra holes where you can take this out, move it up or down. Um, and that's pretty standard among most target sites. Okay, so also pretty standard on target sites are second and third axis adjustments. Um, I believe this one is second. So you loosen these two or one of them. Okay, so that's third axis right there. And now they have some weird um, washers on there. I'm assuming that they're like extreme locking washers. That's kind of what they look like. See right there, they're like extreme locking washers, which is really good because if these get bumped, everything gets jacked up. So you see that's your third axis adjustment. And that's, that's quite a bit of adjustment. That's pretty normal. Um, it's not labeled, which is not the end of the world. Um, but maybe if they just put a little three right there or something, like just now I didn't exactly know which one it was. Um, so that, I mean, that'd be two seconds they could do that. But anyways, it's there, it looks solid and it looks good. Okay, so your second axis actually doubles, does double duty. So if you just crack these loose, 
it does your second axis, but if you take them all the way out, you can move them over to give you this jump of left and right adjustment like I was talking about earlier. So that's kind of cool. It's like a two purpose screw. It saves like extra materials and extra parts in the site. Ow, <laughs> they like break loose. It's those double lock washers. Like that's a lot of force. And then they like crack loose. So there, there is your second axis right there. So looks good. Again, it's not labeled. It'd be kind of hard to label it because it does, those bolts serve two purposes. So I'm gonna see what it looks like with the scope on when we try to take it all the way off. So it simply disconnects like that. That's so sick, it's that easy. It looks super secure too, like there's extra contact points. And there you get a good look at those second axis screws. It just seems robust, like they put a lot of, a lot of work into just making it real sturdy. There's a couple screws on here that I don't know the function of them. This top one right here, I'm not 100% sure what that would do. I'm assuming that if you loosen that, this whole plate would come off. I'm not exactly sure why you wanna do that. Could be wrong, but I'm not 100% sure on that screw. It also looks like they have these locking screws on either side of the bar to kind of like clamp, to clamp that down even more. Now I'm not gonna touch them, but I'm assuming you can adjust the friction levels, which is really good because it always seems like the, like the head or the scope part gets loose and you always rattle against this rail. Um, so that's good that you can adjust those to keep that nice and snug. So this site, this is like the Rolls Royce of sites. It's the pretty much best that there can be, in my opinion, so far of holding this. And there's just literally nothing wrong with it. I really can't find anything other than a couple little like laser engraved things. They could do third axis, second axis, just so you can find it really easily. Um, but other than that, like it's a solid, solid, solid site. So looking at Lancaster's website online, there's, <laughs> There's definitely no reason why this isn't the best target site there is. Coming at $650, this site definitely will probably last you your entire shooting career. And um, But we're, we're gonna throw it on the bow. We're gonna see what it shoots like, how it kind of operates putting a couple arrows through it. And uh, ooh, look at all those fancy colors too. I didn't even know that. Comes in plenty of colors to choose from. That's really cool. All right, well, let's go throw it on a bow. Let's see what it's like. Okay, so we're gonna throw this bad boy on a bow now. Um, probably we'll just grab, put it on like my primary 3D bow. So I was running my Excel Achieve XP, which is great. Really haven't had any issues with this, but it is loud after a while. It gets rattly. Um, so we're gonna see the difference between this Shibuya Ultima site, like top dollar, top of the line site. So let's put it on. It's actually pretty easy to put on. Got my fancy new last chance archery thing. I'm actually super stoked about this. So I've always had to figure out how to do this. It makes it so much easier for videos. And it's right here. So here we go. Grab the Ike Ray Allen wrench. Nope. Yep. Whoo! Do you see the smoke on that? Yeah. Get this next one. You can probably see the smoke on that. And a three, two, one. Oh, did I just strip it? Nah, it just broke loose. That was some pressure. But anywho, it's not too much of a difference in like this mounting bracket. 
They're pretty much the same across all, all brands. What is nice about Shibuya is it clamps down in a circular. So there's like a, a washer in there that clamps down equal pressure rather than like one point and it's a bigger surface point. Um, that's interesting. Does it really matter? I don't know, but uh, it's cool. So they send, I don't know what these little, these nuts and stuff is for. I'm not gonna mess with them. All I know is I need these two screws. How did that happen? How did I rip that off just like that? Um, I just need these two screws. So we'll start with one. Do they use metric? You think these are metric because why they're from Japan? Japan? Oh, that's why they send the Allen wrenches. Metric. Haven't heard of that term in a while. I'm assuming this is metric. All right, that was easy enough. That does sit off the bow a lot. Like it's not as slim. All right? Like compared to this, like that's a little slimmer, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm just seeing things. Tighten these bad boys down. Apparently too tight last time, so we'll take it easy this time. That's nice. High quality threads there. And we'll just run him in a happy medium. There's not a sight window to see where you're lined up. So you kind of have to feel it out, I guess. But there's a little bit of slop in there. See that movement? Not that that really matters too much because you clamp. Oh yeah, it seats. That's what that triangle's for. Cause it's like this. And as you put pressure down, it like seats into place. Solid. Should be good. We'll get our left and rights close. That should be pretty close. We'll kind of get lined up where this was ish. Actually, it should be pretty close. All right, well, let's go step outside. We'll start close and just kind of shoot some. See how it sounds, see how it functions, kind of dialing it in. Um, but I'm a fan. Looks nice. Looks nice on the bow too, with all that carbon exposed. You like it, Mitch? Oh yeah. yeah I like it. All right, let's go shoot. Mm. It doesn't feel like it's gonna wear out. And it's chilly. I'm cold. All right, first impressions while shooting. Can't really tell at full draw any difference. Didn't miss. That sounded quiet. It did. You don't want to be interested in is throw on like an Excel site and then throw this on. Yeah, that's tight. No rattles. Okay, so I'm sitting way left still. So. One thing that's kind of annoying is this knob, release knob, are, is they're very close together. 
So I can only do like half rotations instead of like cranking on it. My thumb hits that every time. Kind of petty, but I did notice that right away. Yeah, and also, I, I almost went to go grab the bottom. It's only on the top. That's gonna take a second to get used to. There we go. Hmm. Well, it's super quiet. There's no rattles in this thing. Like, typically, Typically you can hear like a little something something and I hear nothing. So over time will that change? It, we don't know that. A lot of times like, you know, as you shoot and work stuff around, they loosen up. But based off of this, based off of all of their double lock washers on there, I haven't seen something like that on an archery product. I'm assuming that's gonna stay real tight. But first impressions, that was really sick. There you have it. Unboxing, first looks, what comes in the package, kind of what you can expect. From, from, for my thoughts, a very highly engineered, tight tolerance, should last you a very, very long time sight. Top of the end target sight. The all new Ultima CP Pro. I don't know why everyone has to throw a pro in. Pro, super, supreme, on fire product site but anyways if you're interested in this make sure to check it out at lancaster archery they are shipping them right away so whenever you feel like anything on lancaster archery it's basically amazon it is the amazon of archery lancaster archery thank you guys so much for watching catch you guys next time